Hey guys, Stealth here. In this how-to, we're going to be looking at how you can build a solid deck. Deck building is something that is not something that you do once. It's something that you keep doing because it's part of the fun of Wargame. And adjusting your deck along the way to make sure that you have the best deck for the best situation is what makes this game fun. Now I'm going to build a new deck. It's going to be built around the USFA because this uh, group, this coalition, ha or this nation, sorry, has the best variety of units available. So I'm just going to make this a US general deck. I'm not going with any specialization, not with any era limitations, so I'm just gonna go with a general deck. In logistics, we have the capability to call in units to secure zones, resupply units, and rearm groups. Now, there's quite a variety of units here. And in this case, it is usually best to go with the jeeps, or at least in my situation. A jeep is something that is quick, especially off-road. The Humvee has 90, 90 kph off-road and goes 150 kph on-road. And you get seven of these. Now keep in mind that command vehicles are unarmored, at least most of them. These things come with an M2, but if you're playing it right, they're not going to be using those much. So I'm going to add in 7 trained. Next, we need something to resupply our forces, a main base. And this is where the FOB comes in. FOB stands for Forward Operating Base, and although it's a forward operating base, it's not meant to be on the front lines. You keep this thing in your main zone, and you can only deploy it at the start of the battle. This thing holds 16,000 liters of supplies. Now, how many units you can resupply with that is hard to tell, because every unit and every tank has a different requirement for supply. Say an expensive anti-air missile is a lot more expensive to resupply than tank shells. But it's always good to have one of these around, so I'm going to add one FOB into the deck. Next, we need something to get resupplies to the front quickly. And the USA has two different choppers to do this. They have the Super Chinook, these things come with 2,500 liters of supplies, go 320 kph. You can get four of these, which makes it 10,000 liters of supplies. Or you can go with three of these CH-53s at 3,700 liters of supplies. Now, there's logic to picking either of these. You could say that the Super Chinook, you get four of these, so you're a bit more flexible. If you get one shot down, then you're going to lose 2,500 liters, where you lose 3,700 in this case. But you need to micromanage more choppers. Now, in this case, I like the uh, flexibility that four resupply choppers gives me. So I'm going with four of these. And then I want resupply trucks, so I can take these into towns to resupply infantry. Taking a chopper into a town is dangerous, because usually there's anti-air infantry around and they can take out your topper really quickly. A vehicle is a lot safer because it's on the ground and it has only to fear from things that can directly see it. Now you can use M35 cargos. These come in groups of 15 and carry 500 liters of supplies. Or you can go with the HEMTT, which is a heavy supply truck. They carry 2400 liters, which makes them a lot more valuable than these things. But you only get six of these. Now in this case I'm going with the M35 cargo, because if I lose a couple of these, and that's pretty likely, especially when they're near the front line, I don't really mind losing a couple of these. Whereas losing one or two HEMTTs is going to hurt a lot more. So I'm going with one deck, or, or one card of these. Next, in the infantry section. Before you start with the infantry and the tanks and the supplies, you're going to have to consider what kind of deck you're building. What's going to be the main attack force? In this case, I'm going to build a main attack force of tanks with infantry to take towns and hold them. So I'm going to need a force that can resupply or that can support my tanks by holding important crossroads such as urbans. Now the USA has a large variety of units. And this can make it difficult to pick from. <coughs> but every unit has their own speciality and their own vehicle they come in. First I'm going to select Riflemen. I want to have Riflemen in any kind of variety to hold a town. You can do this with the standard Riflemen. 
You can get Rifleman 90, which have an upgraded AT weapon, and you can go with US Marines in their standard version or an upgraded version. Now, the upgraded version of the Marines is something special. <coughs> you get 25 Marines, or t Marines for 25 points at the standard level, versus Marines 90, who also come at the standard level of 25 points. This is because you get less availability, but a better anti-tank weapon and a better uh, machine gun. In this case, I want to have the Bradley IFV, because this is a very powerful IFV. And they're very capable of supporting tanks, while also delivering infantry pretty quickly to towns. Now the US has quite a variety of uh, Bradleys. You have the standard M2, M2A1, M2A2, and you can pick any of these for your infantry, but notice that the availability of the units goes down as you do this. I can take 18 trained Rifleman 90 and Bradleys, or I can take 9 of the trained Bra um, infantry Marine 90, uh, Rifleman 90s in Bradley M2A2. Now the armory doesn't really let you compare these, it lets you compare the main unit, so you're going to have to be a little picky on which kind of vehicle you're going to be using. In this case I want the M2A1 Bradley because they're a decent mix between armor, anti-tank missile and Bushmaster cannon. I'm going with a group of 13 of these because they're mainly going to be holding towns. The infantry isn't that special but I do like the Bradley very much and they're very capable of supporting tanks in taking out infantry. So I want one card of these. Next, we're going with um, a group of anti-aircraft anti units. You have the choice here between Red Eyes, Stinger A and Stinger C. Again, with all sorts of vehicles they can bring in. Um, these are usually the second group of units you bring in, at least in my case they usually are. Which means that if they're going to a town, I'm going to bring them in in a Humvee. These are very quick, they don't have any armor, but they're very cheap. And I'm going with the Stinger C because they have better accuracy than the Stinger A. So you can see here, the Stinger A has an accuracy of 50%, Stinger C of 70%. <coughs> so this means that the Stinger C makes it a little more appropriate for my uh, application of these units. Now normally, or in different decks, different nations, you have another category here, which is infantry anti-tank. And these come with dedicated anti-tank weapons. Now the US don't really believe in this, or at least they don't have any infantry which carry these in Wargame Red Dragon. So you need to come up with something else. And for this you have the fire supports. They have a small, which is an anti-tank weapon with a good AP power, excellent accuracy, and very low range. But you get quite the number of these, so you can use these in combination with the Rifleman 90 to create something of a standoff capability for a town. These guys come in a couple of different vehicles. You can use the Humvee, which I just used for the Stingers. But in this case, the LVTP-7A1 is a very interesting vehicle because it comes with an anti-infantry grenade launcher. These things go 70 kph off-road, 110 kph on-road, and they have some armor so they can take a hit and I'm going with 13 of these Hardens. Now, the rest of the slots you can fill up with anything you like, because this is usually the basic force to hold a town. In my case, I like to deploy commandos of any kind behind the enemy lines, and to do that, you can use Delta Force for the US. They're still not that good, but they did get a buff in the latest patch. Uh, they now got MP5 SDs, which are submachine guns, and these machine guns or submachine guns can be really effective at taking out infantry. But keep in mind that they only have a 455 meter range. Um, the main reason I deploy these behind the enemy lines are to suppress infantry there, possibly take out command infantries or come into a town from this side. Now it really depends on how you want to use these. If you want to use deltas as anti-urban units, you can go uh, and use them in a V-150. These are ground vehicles. If you want to deploy them somewhere on the other side of the map quickly, you can use the C-48C Chinook or the CH-46 Frog. It doesn't really matter which you take, because these choppers are pretty equal. The Chinook is a little faster on the move, but it's a little slower in landing. 
And in my case, I'm going to use the Chinook. Next, we're going to have a look at the support category. This is where you can get all sorts of units to support the main push. In this, infant, in this category, you're going to find um, air defense guns, air defense missiles, howitzer artillery, MLRS artillery, which is multi-launch rocket systems, and mortars. Now, people always have different interpretations of this category, but I'm usually going with a standard setup, which is to start with an anti-air defense. For this, you have the Avengers, you have the Chaparrales, and actually let me select the air defense first so that we have a smaller selection. The Avengers are best used against helicopters with their 2200 meter range, but most ATGMs carried by helicopters already outrange these things. This is where the Chaparrales come in handy because they have a better range of 2975 and the more, exper or the more expensive versions even come with 3.3 kilometer range, but you get very low numbers of these. Since these guys already have an accuracy of 50%, I like to take these at trained. And I also want to get an air defense gun. And for this you can use the Vulcan with their 2450 meter range against helicopters and their 1700 meter range against airplanes. 25% accuracy which is not that good and they don't have that much ammo. So they're going to be missing quite a bit. The better option in this case is to take the M163 Pivats. This is the improved version of the 163 Vulcan. They have a bit more range, especially against aircraft. Better accuracy, so that means that even though they have the same amount of ammo, they're going to be hitting a lot more. Keep in mind though that these things have the radar tag, which means they use a radar to track their targets. And this makes them vulnerable to seed missions, which are the dedicated anti uh, anti-air defense, anti, anti defense units. But so be it, I do like these units because they've proven very useful. You can take nine of them at trained or seven at hardened and I would do when I take the hardened because they get a little accuracy buff and they don't panic as quickly. Now if you really want to you can use a Pip Hawk. These are the anti-air defense for aircraft. If I compare these to the Chaparrales, you can see that the Chaparral has a 2.6 km range, where these have a 4.5 km range. They have a very high HE power, which means that they can deal with most planes with one shot, but they only carry three missiles. Now you can also choose to take the cheaper version of the Hawk, which have a little less range, same amount of missiles, but they're a little cheaper at 60 versus 90 of the more, exp or the more exp um, expensive Hawk. So in this case I'm going with seven of these. I usually deploy them in batteries of two. And now I can pick one or two cards depending on what my deck will allow to support my tanks. You can use uh, long range artillery for this in the form of howitzers. These units are uh, usually stuffed somewhere near your FOB to immediately resupply them since they carry well, depending on the variety, 35 rounds to only 2 rounds. You can use these to go after artillery batteries, go after uh, infantry in towns. You can use them to go hunting lone units of anti-air. But they don't fire that quickly. The rate of fire is only 4. Now, if I compare this to a mortar carrier, these things have an insane range of 25 rounds a minute. They carry 100 rounds and the range is 4900 meters. And they're even more accurate than the M109A6 Paladin. So in this case, and my personal preference goes to the LAVM. Because they fire a lot faster, they take a lot less time to acquire their target. They're very mobile and they have a lot of rounds. So they're not going to be draining my FOB as much. So I'm going to use one card of these, and I usually don't use any more than four, so I might as well take these guys at Hardened. Right now I'm not going to put anything in the last slot yet, because it's going to cost me three activation points. So let's hop over to the tank category. Now there are a couple of different um, opinions on tanks. Some people like to use them as vehicle stoppers, some people like to spam tanks. And with spamming tanks, they usually use some of the cheapest versions of tanks at only 25 points. 
Now keep in mind that these guys are almost as cheap as some infantry. I have some basic infantry here. These guys cost me 15 plus a 30 point vehicle versus a 25 point tank. This doesn't mean that they can do the same thing, quite the contrary. They're used for very different things. Um, and in this case you can use all sorts of different tanks. As you're going to build different decks, you're going to see different kind of tanks, different kind of availabilities, and different uses for tanks. Because, for example, Sweden uses their tanks quite a bit different than the US. In this case, I'm going to first go with a couple of super heavies. These are the best tanks that you have, but they should never be leading a charge from the front. You should always have a group of other cheaper tanks surrounding these guys. The M1A2 Abrams comes with a very high accuracy, even on the move. Good AP power, good frontal armor, and they have two machine guns to help them fend off infantry. I want two of these. Next, I want to have tanks which I can deploy all across the battlefield. So I'm going to need a bit more of these, and I can go with the M1A1 Abrams for 120 points, or the M1IP, which is the improved basic Abrams. Now if I compare these, you can see that the... Um, M11P has uh, the same amount of frontal armor, but the gun's a bit different. The gun on the M1A1 is better at 19 versus the 15 of the M1P. So in um, this case I do like the heavy armor or the heavy gun on this one, on the M1A1. So I'm going to take seven of these. Next I want to have these guys supported by some other tanks and you can use different varieties of these. Um, you could go with the M8 AGS, which has a very high rate of fire, some AP power and a good range, but they don't have any armor, so even some IFVs can take out these guys. You could also go with Super M60s, which have a lot more armor, good accuracy while they're standing still, and decent AP power. You could go with the MBT-70, which has um, an interesting gun on it which fires heat instead of kinetic damage which means that they always do some damage. Um, they have the Schillerlag missile which is an ATGM with some accuracy, I'm not that happy, about 40%. And personally I like using the M60A1 ERAs because these have a good number of availability, decent armor and a good gun on them. I'm going with 11 of these. Now, I'm not going to spam this category completely full, because I don't need to. I always like to build up my deck uh, core first, which is what I've done in the logistics, infant, uh, infantry and support and now the tanks. Fill up all of these and then come back and f uh, see where I have some room and what kind of units I can use. <coughs> Next, we have the recon category. And this is where you use the units to scout for your other vehicles. The US has a large variety of vehicles you can use for this task and they all have their own tools and their own uses. Consider this a toolkit and think which unit would be best suited to support your main attack force. In this case I could take rangers. If I want to attack with a couple of tanks, rangers are not really the best option because they only go 25 kph, where a tank can go up to 70 kph off-road. If you want to use rangers, these guys can be deployed into buildings or into woodlands to make sure that they can spot from there. So these are more of passive spotters, they're not moving as much. In my case, where I want to do some pushing with tanks, I could use some of the Bradleys. These have some armor on the front, not that much, depending on which Bradley you take. They have a very good missile, especially the 90-point M3A2 Bradley. I could go with a scout helicopter, and also uh, even these come in three different varieties. These are the armed with a minigun, these are armed with a machine gun and some rocket pods. And finally you have one which is armed with four hellfires. You also have Navy SEALs here. You can use these in the same role as the Rangers, except for attacking vehicles. Because the Rangers have an ATGM, or an anti-tank weapon, in the form of the Carl Gustav M2 with a good AP power. 
The seals on the other hand can be used in towns with their grenade launcher which is very very effective against infantry. Um, I always like to use different kinds of recons, never be dependent on only one variety because every map is different and every battle is different so you gotta be able to have different tools in your toolkit so that you can pick the best tool for the job. This means that I usually go with one card of rangers which are flown in by a Black Hawk. I can use seven of these. Next I want a scout helicopter. In this case I'm going to select only the recon helicopters because even the, US, the US even has a variety of units in this category. I got the AH-1J Cobra. This is a recon chopper armed with rockets. They have quite a high variety or quite a high availability at seven. They come with a grenade launcher and these guys are best used against vehicles, light vehicles and infantry carriers. Next you got the AH-64D Apache Longbow, 16 Hellfire missiles, exceptional optics, very high speed and I do love these units because they are so effective at killing tanks. So I'm going to take three of these because they're going to level up on their own using their Hellfires. And I want a vehicle which can keep up with a push of tanks. <coughs> the US has a large variety of vehicles. Um, you could use the Bradleys, but you get a low availability of 7 to 4, depending on how much veterancy you pick. You could use some of these tanks, which have the same problem, or you could sit somewhere in between or go towards the cheaper version. Now in this case for the Bradleys it doesn't matter which kind of variety you pick, they all hold the same availability, but their price increases from 60 to 90, and the missile on it is a bit different. You could also go with the LAV-25 Scout, you get a good number of these, at only good optics versus very good optics on the Bradley. Now I really like Bradleys, as I've pointed out repeatedly, so I'm going to take seven of these. I know they're expensive, but they usually punch well above their weight class. And their very good optics make sure that my tanks have a lot of targets to shoot at. Next you have the vehicles category. Now vehicles category is where they put all the vehicles which don't really suit any of the other categories. So in here you're going to see ATGM carriers, napalm units, fire support vehicles which have guns on them. You even got a combat engineer's vehicle with a very high HE power gun. Um, you don't have to pick any units in this category, but I found that in this category you can find units which can really round off your deck. And by this I mean these are units which can usually fulfill multiple purposes um, in the sense that they can support tanks but also take on some vehicles and uh, possibly anti or air units on their own. For the US deck I highly recommend using Comvats. These are Bradley-like vehicles. You can recognize the shape but they carry a different gun. These guys have a very very high accuracy of 70%. They have a ton of rounds. They do have some armor. They have some AP power which makes them able to deal with vehicles and they can deal with infantry using HE power. I like these guys very much and I'm using them a lot in my deck so I'm going with 13 trained. Next I want to have the capability of going into town and wiping out infantry there and the best vehicle for this job is the combat engineer's vehicle, the M728. This is one of the highest AP values you can see on a tank. HE power 8, which means that it's going to be very very effective at taking out infantry. And it has a good number of armor, which means that it can sustain one or two anti-tank weapon hits from infantry. Now these guys don't really have a high life expectancy, and I don't think I'm going to be using them that much, but they're going to take a lot of fire. So the more experienced they are, the less likely they are to panic. So I'm going to use nine of these. And then I want some ATGM carriers. These are the anti-tank missiles and you have a good variety of these. Um, you got the LAV AT. This is the Marines vehicle you can use. You got the more 
pricey M109A1 ITV or you got the standard Humvee and these you guys usually work with the same missiles. These have the TO2 missile, these have the ITO which is basically the TO1.5 and these have the standard TO missiles. In my case I found that scattering a couple of Humvees over the sector was very effective and since these guys already have a 70% accuracy I'm going with nine of them. Next we have the helicopter category and the US again has a lot of different helicopters. You're not going to be seeing half of these vehicles or half as much of these vehicles in other decks but the variety that the US gives really allows you to pick and choose what kind of uh, helicopter you want to use and what kind of role it's going to have to fulfill. In my case I want these guys to function as anti-tank weapons mostly and to be able to suppress infantry and light vehicles so they basically have to be able to do it all except go after helicopters because I got enough units to do that. So that means that I will not use the Super Cobra because the Super Cobras have a lot of good anti-tank missiles but they carry anti-air missiles which I don't need. What I can use are the Sea Cobras. <coughs> These guys carry the standard tow missile which doesn't have a very high AP power which makes them a little less effective at dealing with tanks. In this case a better choice would be the AH-1F Cobra. This thing only costs 10 points more gets less availability but has a better weapon on it. And If you really want to kill some, have something that can kill tanks you can use the Apache which comes with 8 health fires. They also have a lot of Hydra missiles which makes them able to deal with light vehicles and this M230 auto cannon is very effective against both light vehicles and infantry. I found that one of these can usually fend off quite a bit of vehicles and possibly a wave of tanks they have a good accuracy both on their main cannon and their hellfire so I'm going to go with a trained group of these. I found that the little birds aren't really used that much but I like them very much because they have a grenade launcher which makes them absolutely very effective at killing infantry both in towns and in the open. You can go with 13 of these or 9 of these. Their accuracy is quite appalling so I use them in groups of 2 to 4 in the trained variety. Now I can take one more chopper and I usually go with the OH-50A8CS. These carry anti-air missiles and they're dedicated anti-air carriers. They have a 50% accuracy, they carry 4 missiles compared to the Sea Cobra which only carries 2 of them. They have quite a low range against helicopters but still enough range to outrange a gun on the enemy helicopter. These guys are very handy to have in your deck because they can even shoot down airplanes so they can be used as a makeshift anti-air defense. I found that deploying these in higher numbers works better than higher availability or higher veterancy so I'm going with 7 and we're moving on to the air category. Now the US again as always has a lot of different aircraft so how do you pick and choose from these? Well first we're going to select an air superiority fighter. These fighters are dedicated anti-air units and they do not do anything else except this. Um, you have four different planes you can use to do this job. You got the old F4J Phantom II. These guys carry 6.3 kilometer range missiles but at a very low accuracy and I don't like this very much. You got the F16C Block 52. These carry four MRAMs, which have a good range and a very good accuracy. You got the AIM-9M, which is a very good anti-helicopter and anti-plane weapon if you want to use it as such. These are very good anti-air fighters. They have exceptional air detection, 40% ECM, which means that they're less likely to be hit if they're taking fire from either an anti-aircraft gun or an anti-aircraft missile. And we have some other units in the form of the two Eagle versions. There's the F-15A Eagle and the F-15C Eagle. Now let's compare these quickly. You got the F-15A which is the older variant, 1976, and one that is 11 years younger at 1987. These come with MRAMs, these come with Sparrows. Now the difference between these is that the F-16E or F-16C have exceptional air detection, 
50% ECM. These guys only have 30% ECM, but they're very good air detection, which is a little less. They carry different missiles. These carry the M9L versus the M9M. And they carry the Sparrow, which has more HE power. The accuracy is a bit less, but I do like the higher HE power. And if you compare availability, you're going to see you can only take one of these F-16C Eagles, or F-16C Eagles, at one Elite. Or I can go with two of these at Trained. So in this case I'm going with two trains, because if one of these gets shot down, I can always call in another one. So that's air superiority. Next we're going with anti-tank. And the US has a very good anti-tank plane, or anti-ground plane really, because this thing also comes with a monster cannon on it. Which is the 18 A-10A Thunderbolt. I usually don't even think about these, and I click two rookies, because these things are almost always in the air on my part. Next, you want something that can bomb enemy fighters or enemy units. Um, bombs come in a couple of different varieties. You have the 227 kilogram bomb, which has an HE value of 10 usually. You have them which carry uh, heavier bombs. Um, let me find one. Yeah, this is a special one. This is the stealth fighter. 20 HE power, which is the highest in the game. And what I'm also looking for are the multi rolls. These guys, let me see, carry 500 kilogram bombs, 15 HE power. And you have the F 15D, which carries 1000 kilogram bombs. Now, how you use these is 1000 kilogram bombs are usually effective against vehicles and sometimes tanks. They can do some damage to tanks. You have the uh, 227s. These are used against light vehicles, most stuff which is unarmored and infantry in the open. And then there are the bombers which carry 500 kilogram bombs, which are in the middle. They usually only carry two of these. And they can attack lighter vehicles, which are somewhere between light vehicle and tank. Infantry, um, they can basically do it all, but they're not as effective as either of them. They're pretty average. In my case, I want to have something that can kill infantry. And I could go with Napalm in this deck, but in this case I'm going with a bomber that can take out infantry using 227 kilogram bombs. And the F111E Artvark is the best for this job. This is basically a carpet bomber which drops 12 of these in a line. So I'm going to use two of these. Next I want to have a SEED plane. Now SEED stands for Suppression of Enemy Air Defenses. Which means that these units can attack anything that has a radar source. Since anti-air units are the only units which have an anti uh, a radar source, these things can only target anti-air units which have their radar switched on. They come with a very high range, very good ECM of 50, and you get three versions of these. You get the Prowler, you get the Raven, and you get the F4G Wild Weasel. Now the F4Gs can be used as anti-aircraft if you like, but they have quite a low range of seed missile of only 4200, where the anti-air batteries have 4500 meters at best. So these things are going to have to get in range of the anti-air to take them out. The Prowler has almost the same problem, they only have 400 meters more. And the Raven has the best range of missile, but you only get one of these. But at their 60% ECM, I found that these things usually make it home and that their missile are very accurate, very long range, and these things are almost always capable of taking out their target. So I'm going to take one of these. This gives me one slot, and I could fill this up if I wanted to. Um, you don't have to fill it up if you don't like aircraft or if you're not sure how to use them yet. Or you could use the fifth slot to take an aircraft which is uh, marked experimental, or at least that's how I like to mark them. Um, which is an aircraft which I haven't used before. And this way you can practice with the aircraft, see how it performs while you still have the backbone of your standard aircraft deck. In this case I'm going with the F-117 Nighthawk. 
These can be used with their exceptional stealth to sneak behind enemy lines or take out vehicles and targets which are usually unable to be reached by aircraft. They come in veteran, they have a zero meters dispersion. They're fire and forget weapons so you drop them and you fly off, you don't have to keep line of sight with the target. And they have a very high HE power. Now a special remark about the Nighthawk. Uh, currently, which is August 2014, these things attack from the top. Earlier in the game they attacked from the front, which means that now they can even destroy tanks. So keep in mind that if you see a heavy tank, in the sense of a super heavy worth about 150 points, you can use these things to take them out from the top. Now, I'm getting 56 out of 60 points of activation points, so I only got 4 left. I got a well-rounded deck here. Let's head back to see what kind of units I can call in. Now it's not very handy to call in another infantry support or logistics unit because those come at a price of three. What I can do is call in another group of tanks and another group of recon, another group of vehicles or helo, or sorry, these, and any combination of these because that gives me two extra cards versus only one card in these categories. In this case, I do like the tanks, so I want to have a bit more variety here. And in this case, let's see, what shall we pick? I'm going with the M8 AGS, because they are very effective against lighter vehicles. I'm going with 13 of these. Now I'm going to switch to the Recon tab and get some more Scouts. I do have the expensive Bradleys, I do have the expensive Longbow, so I want something on the cheap, and the Humvee is quite suitable for this. The Humvee has a grenade launcher or a minigun. Grenade launcher is very effective against ground targets. Minigun is effective against both air and ground. And I think that this thing is a bit more versatile than the other units, and this thing can take out aircraft as well. So I'm going with nine of these. So that finishes off my activation points. What I do have left is the naval category. And in this sector, or in this uh, section of the deck, I usually take the same units, depending on the nationality that is. I'm going with two Lafayettes. I like the STR B90s. These are small riverine crafts, which means that they can go up the rivers where the heavier ships cannot. They carry Hellfire missiles and a grenade launcher and I found them to be very effective against all sorts of vehicles and even air. Going with four of these. Next, I want a resupply unit to resupply both of these ships. And for this I can get the LCM, or the LCU. These are landing craft which carry 10,000 liters of supplies each. So four of those. And now I want something that can land on enemy shores. The best way to do this is usually with infantry, because there's usually some sort of uh, buildings you can hide in. Now, let's select, uh, sorry, not recon infantry, infantry, rifles, lights. In this case, the light riflemen might be the best alternative, because the light riflemen carry the Super Dragon, which is a standoff anti-tank weapon at 1900 meters. 50% accuracy, 15 AP power, which is not that good. But these guys can be used to form a bridgehead so that other team members can land. I want to have these guys on hardened veterancy because they're going to be taking a lot of fire usually. And this will also help with the accuracy of their anti-tank weapon. Now I only got one slot left and for this I'm going with anti-air infantry. I'm again going with the Stinger C because they have good range and combine them with these, these can take out many of the threats that are coming at them. These guys already have good accuracy and I'm going to be with 60 trained. So this is my deck, this is a very rounded general US deck. You can use it to tackle almost any problem provided you use the right unit for the right mission. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments below and if you like the way I set up this deck please hit the like button I'll leave the export or import code, depending on how you want to see it, in the description below so you can import this deck if you want to have a general starter deck. Let me know what you think and good luck playing Wargame Red Dragon.